Hi everyone and welcome to another week with me Justin Garner. This week I'm going to be showing you how I produced this image. Okay, so I'm just going to show you around my setup. So I've got my Bowens lights and they're set to the lowest power and that's what they're set to. Uh, I just come around here. I've got a soft box on the end. So that's the kind of light filament I've gone for. And if I come around to this side, going by the tripod and come around to the other side of the, I've got the skins or the diffusers. I've got one there and inside I've got another one as well so I'm trying to make the light really soft on the subject which is up here and you can see how that is you can see how I've got the black the black is uh, a piece of material draped on my uh, homemade rail that I built so if you've not seen my video on how I did that I've got a little video of how I've saved space and created a backdrop inside a small area the other thing that I've got is I've got um, this uh, reflector, uh, just a round modelling reflector, just to bounce light back onto the uh, sunflower. And what I've chosen is, I've chosen to use the duller side, so you've got a silver side here, and I've chosen to use the duller side because I found that it was too reflective using the other side. Uh, and the other thing that I've got, which uh, I think is uh, great, is I've got this on an arm, on a stand and this arm just allows me to keep it exactly in place especially when we're doing this focus stacking we want we, we want uh, every image to be exactly the same so uh, we don't want any movement so that being held in position perfectly like that is great the other bonus for this is it's keeping this other sunflower slightly out of the way so that we've got a clean shot of this and it's not intruding luckily this sunflower is just lower so just showing uh, a few of the features and some of the settings that I change when I'm doing this focus stacking and this is more on the lens. So I'm using a 100mm macro lens and I've switched the focus into manual focus. You don't want it on autofocus, uh, you want to be in control. And the other thing with this lens is it's got image stabilisation and you want that switched off because you don't want any movement or any it, it try to do any work. You want it to stay really still when you're moving the camera forward on this rail. And this rail um, is going to move fractionally forward bit by bit when I'm doing the focus stacking. The other thing that I've got is I've got this um, remote shutter release. So when I press this button, I've got the camera set to a two second delay. And that's, if you can see there, when I'm pressing it and moving it, it it's moving around and that's just going to eliminate that and give me a little bit more time for it to settle before it takes the next shot. So looking at the settings on the back of my camera, uh, I shoot in manual mode, that's so I'm in control of all the different areas on the camera. I'm shooting at 1 60th of a second and that's to line up with my strobe lights. My f-stops at 5.6 and I've worked out that the depth of field how wide it is i've worked that out so that i know how far to move the camera on the rail so that there's an overlap so every bit of it's sharp so i shoot at that it's kind of just my rule um or my um knowledge of the lens you could say that my iso is at 100 uh, i normally keep that low if i can control the light but if i'm outside i need to raise the shutter speed i might raise my iso up uh, the other two things that I've changed here is I've got my shutter speed, um, my style of taking the picture at two seconds, uh, and that again, just so that I don't get any camera shake on the camera. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm not shooting in JPEGs, I'm shooting in RAW files, and I'll discuss that a little bit more in depth when we're on the computer. So this is the composition that I've gone for, and you can see that I've uh, offset the sunflower to my right and I've got the light coming in from the right as well 
but again that's slightly offside just so that I can create some shadow and create a 3D kind of effect uh, so it kind of jumps out. The other important thing I've done is I've left enough room in the frame because I'm going to be moving my camera forward bit by bit when I'm doing this focus stacking using the rail. So that's quite important because you don't want to chop them leaves off uh, on the edges. So why will you do this um, focus stacking technique? So when you're doing macro photography, the depth of field or the bit that's in focus is very narrow. Uh, and this makes you have to take multiple shots to get everything sharp. So if you imagine that sunflower, you want the front and the back to be all sharp, but you want to use a macro lens like this to pick the detail. The way you're going to do it is you're going to take the section that's in focus, move the camera forward so that section moves as the camera moves forward. And what you do is you focus on the very front of the um, whatever the subject is, and this is my technique, and then I move slowly through the um, subjects until I get to the very back. A little tip, before I do my stack, I put my hand in front of the lens and I take the picture. And this is kind of like a bookmark so that I know where the stack started. And then what I do then is, I've got my trigger here, and this is the rail. And what I do is I look on my rail, it has little notches where it's like a gearing system. And I just look on there, move it forward a little bit, take the shot and then wait for a little minute and then move it forward again, take the shot, move it forward again and then take the shot. And sometimes it misfires with the lights, that misfired then. Always technical problems. There we go. Uh, and then move it forward again. So it's quite tedious. But if you're geeky like me, you kind of like doing it. So you do that over and over again until you get to the point and you're constantly looking on the back of your screen of your camera to see when you're at the point where it's gone out. It's like you've gone past the point where you want it to be. And I always go a few shots behind so that you know you've got everything then. That's how I, how I normally work. Okay, so we're going to put all them, all them images onto the computer and then I will show you the software that I use to create the stacked image. So I'm back in the uh, office now with my computer and I've loaded all them images onto my PC. I'm going to show you how I use Zareen Stacker to create the image and also we're going to export it out of that program and use Photoshop to do a small edit. Now whilst we're speaking about that, about editing and things like that, um, I'm not coming across as I know everything about um, using things like Photoshop or anything like that but what I'm going to do throughout this channel is show you how I produce the images I produce um, and there might be better ways of doing it but it doesn't really matter how you do it it's what you produce at the end of the day so uh, any comments or anything like that uh, are welcomed I don't mind anyone telling me better ways of doing things but what I'm finding um, I want to do on the channel is I don't want it to be like lectury I just want people to see what I do and if it's inspiring or it's educational for that purpose then brilliant so enough of me rabbiting on let's jump into the computer and I'll show you how to use this software so I took all the images as raw files and the software that I use Zareen Stacker only reads JPEGs so we have to convert the raw files into JPEGs and I do this in Photoshop. Now the reason that I shoot in raw is so that I can use the raw editor and um, so how I do it is I go to if you go to file then you go to scripts and then you go to image processor it opens this window uh, and then you what you do is you find the folder and in my case, I'd already looked for it, so it's um, that was today's date of when I've done the shots, and then my raw folder. And then you won't see the files, but the files are in there, and you select where they are, and press OK. 
it's important that you have just the stacks images or the images that you want to convert in there so if you took any other images just make sure you've got a selected folder designated to the images that were taken now when I was taking the shots there was some misfires from the um, from the, the flash uh, and I've taken them out I've gone in and deleted all them because I don't want them in there and um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the run this and this is going to open up the raw editor and what this will do is whatever I do here will apply it to every single file that's in that folder basically and um, so whatever I do here it just means I have to do it every single time and um, so I'll just do the do the edit now so probably make this a little bit warmer um, adjust the exposure but I'm gonna probably come back to that when I've changed some of the other settings and um, always push the contrast up a little bit I think the important thing with this is that you don't push some of these sliders too far really I think it's just a case of just minimal amounts um, with my highlights I always bring my highlights down so I feel like I see more detail in so you imagine where the leaf is here so you got the leaf there and then when I bring the highlights down I feel like you can see more detail rather than if it was up higher so I normally drag it down and that's where I'll adjust my exposure kind of compensating what's happening really shadows I just have a play around with that and see how that's looking uh, again with the whites and the blacks again it's just a case of see what it's like really um, and then the textures and normally push texture and clarity so that's kind of, kind of like sharpening really the other thing that I do so my vibrance I normally push right up and this is probably where I go a little bit extreme so I'll push that up and then my saturation I'll drag down and this is how I get my desaturated shots so we kind of like that desaturated kind of look and then I do push my sharpening tools a little bit more than I maybe I normally would do and it kind of gives it this kind of um, I don't know a certain look to the image that's that's um, so yeah so don't really play with the dehaze don't really need to do that but I'm happy with how that's looking that's looking quite good for me so if I press open I think there's about 65 images in the folder now that will just go through every single file uh, image should I say in the file and apply all them settings and it's just turning them all to JPEGs and it makes a JPEG folder in the same file that's what will happen so that will be ready um, in a few minutes say about five minutes uh, and then we'll be able to look at Zareen's stacker and see how easy it is to do the stack and also then we can see whether the, my stacking my or my uh, using the rail the technique I use to see whether it's worked so let's see okay so we'll just uh, open up Zareen stacker and then what we need to do is we need to input our files so we just go to file add files and then find where our images are kept um, so that wasn't the image we did so we just go to here and there's all the images and there's the JPEGs so we just um, select all these images and I'll place them all in here I think, like I said there's about 60 odd images there um, and then you've got a choice in your stacking the way you want to stack so you can either do this P map or D map I always go for the P map um, find that this does like, intri like intricate parts a little bit better um, but you can try both or you can actually choose both if you like but I try one and then try the other uh, so I'm going to try it on this first and see how it comes out and pretty much when you press that it's going to uh, run on its own and it'll start creating the image on this side and it'll basically go through every single image and find the areas where it's sharp uh, and then build it together so again this will take quite a while so let's wait for a bit and see what the uh, finished result is okay so we've got the uh, finished uh, stacked image here um, so that's looking okay but we'll have a closer examination of it so we've got the image here 
and what we'll do is we're going to save that out so we're going to save output images saving it as a jpeg and we're going to save it out and i normally just save it in that jpeg folder and i can see it there and it's got pmax written on it save that and then i okay and i'll just go open up bridge and go to that folder and there's the image and now I'm just going to open this up in Photoshop and when I open this up I examine the uh, image then and um, so I can see if there's any errors if it's missed any any points because sometimes if you're moving the camera forward and the bits of sharp the bits of sharpness in the images aren't overlapping then you get um, you get areas where it's just not sharp so um, what I do is I look at this navigator so if you don't have that on your Photoshop window if you just go to windows and you click on navigator this will pop up and I just find this is really easy to navigate quickly so if I want to look at anything I just zoom straight in and then I just move the box around so I'm just looking around the, the, the main area that I'm after being sharp is this area here and um, so yeah just looking and just seeing how it all looks don't mind these extra leaves going out of focus there it's more of the flower that we're after really and I think that's looking pretty good I think that's done a quite a good job on that there's no issues there for me love all these little tiny hairs that are uh, popping out and then when we've got Photoshop open the edits that I do to it are I'll have a look at uh, levels and I might change the levels on it and just just slightly touch some of the other things around again it's all minimal what I do I don't do anything massive and um, the other thing that I like to use is um, a lot of people these days are going on about um, LUTs or color lookups and I do use these so if you look up color lookup here and you go up to that the color lookup panel and it just drops in there and um, you get all these different ones and I think you can make your own as well and um, but what I used on the image what I made before was this foggy night and if you drop that on straight away it looks like that which is not very nice but if you lower the opacity and I generally lower it to 25% and then I just play around with it I kind of like that look and I might increase it or play around with it and then I actually load another one on this is how I did the other picture and I actually use this candle light and again dropping the opacity down so it's just very subtle and this is just to bring a bit of color back into it um, and I'm just going to play around with this levels as well maybe um, and yeah it's just playing around to get to get how I want it to look whether it's going to look how I don't know it's just it's just playing around really and that's it but that is um, basically how I created the images so the the image um, I shown at the start of the video that was the first time I did it and then this is again I've just done this one with you and you can see a similar result slightly different but similar result so I hope that's been helpful in how I do focus stacking and the techniques that I use to achieve that and also the software that I use using Zareen Stacker and the way that I do uh, small adjustments in Photoshop. So if you enjoyed the video, what everyone says, give it a like. And also if you're liking the content that I'm producing, do follow the channel by subscribing. It's, um, yeah, it's much appreciated, anything like that. So until next week, and it's always on a Friday, I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye for now.